talk to you today about photography for your yarn. People are mostly asking, what kind of camera do you have? And it's not really the camera because I'm no professional photographer. Basically what I have is a point and shoot. It's a, a Canon power shot. It's just an upscale point and shoot, but basically the tips that I use, you can use with any kind of camera, even your, your, your smartphone camera and things like that. So if you're really into photography, this video is not for you. This is very beginner stuff. These are simple, basic tips for making the most of what you already have. Now, if you're selling your stuff via the internet, a picture is your most valuable resource because that's really all you have. Nobody can pick it up and feel it and touch it and try it on. So you have to make it look good, show it in its best light. You know, marketing is psychology. The better your presentation, the better they think your work is. And you want to remove the happy hands at home appearance from your yarn work and make it look more like, um, custom designed and handmade, which is very different in people's minds. Now, which of these bags do you think would sell better? Where you choose to take these pictures is key. It's critical. It will affect things like background and lighting, which are very, very important in showcasing the subject of your photograph. What the heck is that? She needs to stop crocheting and fix the paint in that door jam. Oh, a beach bag. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you were to take it on a day on the lake, you're showing its use. So the customer looks at it, you've got it labeled a beach bag, and they're thinking, well, how big is it? And the flash is washing out the bottom view. Is it round or pleated or what? So this picture seems to answer all the questions. It's roomy, it accommodates a large beach towel well, and there appears to be room for all the other junk you carry to the beach with you. A buyer looks at this picture and they're thinking, what pigs? I might catch a disease if I buy something made in that house. So the lesson learned is that the background should enhance your product in some way. It needs to show its use, its size, its shape. Anything that would help the buyer have questions answered. It should never take away from the object. Now, I'm outside on my back porch, which is where I've done several of my videos before, because the one thing you can't argue is sunshine is light that is free. You don't need a fancy setup. So I would say for beginners, anytime you can take your pictures outside, the better. And today happens to be a great day. It's overcast. And that means when you're overcast, you don't have any shadows. So look over there by my bushes. You can see there are no shadows that are interfering. And shadows can be a problem when we're trying to get detail in our pictures. So if you want to see my typical outdoor studio, how I set things up for a picture, this is what I do. And don't laugh. Okay, I put my hat or whatever I want to take a picture of up here on my fire pit. Now, Margaret, I don't have a fire pit. You don't need a fire pit. I do this because I'm lazy. I don't want to bend over. Basically, what you want to do is shoot your picture head on as if it were eye level. And that's a general assumption. You never know. It might be better if you need to show the focus on the top of your hat. You need to take it from above. You know, things like that. So, generally speaking, I want to take mine from eye level. Minimizing the background uh, is a technique that I use. And what I usually do is just make the background fuzzy so that your subject is in focus and everything else behind it is a blur. 
The technical term for that is depth of feel, but you don't need to know that. Now, I use, I mean, you, this can be done with all these manual settings and everything like that, but I use a shortcut. On the top of most point-and-shoot cameras these days, you got a selection dial. It's got handy-dandy preset options on it. I've heard photographers refer to them as idiot settings, and I use them all the time, if that tells you anything. Here's the top of my Canon PowerShot, and here's a close-up of the dial. You see the icon of the person's head? That's called the portrait setting. And if you've got another brand, I'm sure there's a portrait setting, but you've got to find it, so go use your manual or Google it. Okay, so after I place it on top of the fire pit, I get as far away as I can and still zoom in to bring the object that I'm taking, the object that I want to focus on, needs to fill up the frame. Okay, so that's, I get as far away as possible and still be able to zoom into the fullness of the frame. Okay, so in my case, the fire pit's there, I go here. And then zoom in. What that does is bring my object in close and the camera tries to focus just on that. And then because it's using all its, its power to focus just on that, all of this gets blurry. So that's a pretty handy dandy trick. Look for your portrait setting. I noticed lighting here I wanted to show you as an example. You see how this half of my face is dark and this half is light. That's because my light source, the sunshine, is coming from this direction over here. See how I'll get completely lit if I put the light source in front of me, the subject, and let it shine on me. Of course, if I'm behind it, I mean, if I, I put the light source behind me, this would be no good either. So make sure you pay attention, whether you're indoors or outdoors, to have the light source in the right place.